the Lord and that is us Lord we give you our hearts all that we are God in Jesus name we thank you that Malachi 310 you will pour out a blessing and overflows you will rebuke to the fire in every way and you will fill our barns with grain our God shall supply all of our needs in Christ Jesus we say yes and Thank you, Father. Let's just thank God again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are. We are going to start doing amazing things. We serve Him with three things: purity. Remember the, uh, the verse of Second Peter. I don't have that today. In Second Peter, it says the last days we will walk in peace. People around us don't have peace. We will walk in being spotless. And what we've been talking about is the fact that he, he is doing that. This is, he is preparing people. He is doing that within us, guys. Hello. <laughs> He is doing that within us. It's just powerful. I just, you know, I, I read something I was working on just going on that scripture this week and I picked up all the little chains. I haven't done it. I'm used to reading all the chains every day. You all see the book I have. It's all patterns and form. So I picked up that day what he was talking about. Sanctification. He said this. He said it's not to be seen. Guys, when we talk about here about sanctification, about being spotless and blameless, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. He is holy, and He is in us. Now, do we have to yield? Yeah, but we're yielding to the greater glory. Think about it. I mean, we're going to begin to see that these things that it's even all that condemnation of lies, we're going to start looking at them. What? I'm going for the greater glory. My glory for God being His glory in me. And we, I tell you, I'm, I'm nailing that because you are going to read Scripture. That word glory is going to come up. You're going to say, Bingo! That's what Pastor Ronald is talking about. <coughs> that God is bringing His glory through us as people. Rise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Deep darkness shall come upon the earth and deep darkness upon the people. But the Lord will arise upon you. His glory will be seen upon you. Any better than that? And that's the process of God doing it in us. Those scriptures that Come alive this week. I want to read it to you. Come on. Can you switch back to me? Oh, you did? Okay, you probably did. Thank you. Thank you. Did. Thank you. Let's give Doug a hand. Thank you. Doug. He's <laughs> so comfortable. He's so gentle back here. Appreciate you, brother. So, I tell you, I forgot, you know, what we've been talking to is what Christ in us to hope for. Why? Because we are his conduit. We can't wait for God to do it any other way. So I tell you guys, he is we're in the last days. Not sure where we are, of course not. But we're seeing up. I'm not going to hop out going into this next year. The four horses and the four creatures just heard. It's amazing. That's I'm studying out now. The first horse is the white horse. It will be taken the white horse to Revelation 19. Because the enemy is what? He's a king of faith. If you go to that, it's, and that's all about deception. The enemy is. It's 
And God is going to wipe off the deception of people around us. Because we embody the truth. We have the truth of God in us. You see why he is so working on us to receive receive what God is doing in us. What that means is that we begin to raise who we think about ourselves. It's your life in you. So he's getting rid of stinking thinking. He's getting rid of everything that would keep us from shining and light and glory and true life. Because everywhere we go is where God's moving. Yeah. Philippians 2, we looked at Philippians 2, 12 and 13. You know, I, um, I just see God, you know, with, with the teachings, it's like a, a hammer and a nail. Bill knows you can't hit the hammer one time. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. But Philippians 2, 12 talks about how the Word of God works in us. Work out our fear of God. Which is, again, talk about fear. Fear is not being scared of God. It's wanting more of God. So if anything that was sold in that, sold in that, we want to have fear of God as it goes more in. So the fear of God, in terms of we work out our strength, our salvation. So that. God is in us both to look and to act according to his words. So, Paul and so many of them saw, they were beginning to see what we would come into. 2020, we had the worst deception ever. 2020 is a mark of the year. I don't want to sit here and describe, I'll probably be kicked off. <laughs> Describe all the deception that's happened in different areas of health, government, social media, elections. That was a mark. So, Second Thessalonians, I want to show you a word God gave me. In Second Thessalonians, we see all that happening. The day of the Lord has come. Don't it says, well, let me go back. It says, <laughs> don't be quickly shaken in the composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if it must be the effect of the day of the Lord. I said, no one anyway see God. Deception. There'll be deception in the church, all over. Remember, God, that's why God is so focused on us and what He's doing in us. And He loves us. He loves all each of us so much. And as I pray that prayer on that Psalm 139 He's seen us before He formed us. I'm talking about, we talk about Him forming us in the womb. He's in us before that. Because He has an amazing picture of who we are. So He's always working for that. To be brought forth. And more and more and more in this time. Go so not unless you have apostasy comes first. That's far away. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. Then you got the man of lawlessness being revealed, the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself above every so called so called God, an object of worship. He takes a seat in the temple of God. You know, this is coming. This is coming. The mystery of lawlessness. Is already at work. I'm going to just skip a little bit. You think that? <laughs> yes. All this is Second Timothy three. All Paul said in, in the last days there will be turbulent, difficult times, where the spirit of lawlessness will be released. Only he who restrains him will do so until he's taken away. The lawless one will be revealed, and the Lord will slay with God and bring to an end God's indignation of His coming. So let me just give you a couple of thoughts here about where we are. There are three, the Lord coming to us, there are three of them. The Lord coming, right? The Lord coming. He's talking about the last one here. The 
the Lord's going to come with us again. That's why come, he'll come with us. Let's just talk about that now. I'm going to just give you encouragement what God does. Because he'll come at the end with all, he says, he will, he will destroy him with the breath of his mouth. Let me go back. He says, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. That's when God totally brings a new heaven. That's the very end, okay? But he goes on in verse 30, he tells us how we should be. And all along here, he says, For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence. God will see people around us affected by this deceiving influence. And so they will what? Not believe, they believe what is false in order that they may be judged and do not believe the truth. But take pleasure in wicked. So we'll have people more than not believe the truth. But God in it some way. That's why we have to rise and shine. And that's why you don't get, you know, don't let the enemy mess with you and someone who doesn't. Just move on, right? We plant seeds. Living out of my head, and I, I touch my wife and I kind of nail stuff. <laughs> oh, I said, Lily, you're going in, so you're going in too. I'm going to buy <laughs> but I mean, what ended up is sharing scripture. Second Corinthians five seventeen with the fellow of uh, Vietnam. Because you know we just sit there, you know, when you know, the glory comes out of us, the presence of God just comes up. We do nothing, and somehow we start talking about a son. He said, "That my son reads the Bible. He reads the Bible all the time." <laughs> so that word is it's a yeah. I he does. I thought he's born again. He didn't know anything about that. So we took him to Second Corinthians 5 17. And, and he looked at it. I read it for him. He needs a Bible. We're going to get him a Bible. So this is what we're going to plant a seed. Plant a seed. Good. We're planting seed. And the Lord will give increase. So that's what happens if we go around. Because that's what God wants to And clear anything that's affected us. You know, and all we have to do is agree with him because he's just jealous, right? He is. He says, well, what about you? What about that, Lord? <laughs> what should I do with that? Man, it's over. It's clean. So, that's, that's what we're going to be in. But we should, we should live in love. We should give thanks to God for Jesus. The love of the Lord is, is us now. Is who we are right now. The love of the Lord. Because God had chosen you from the beginning for salvation and sanctification by the Spirit. So we've been talking about. God does it, we receive it. On all the changes. So when God puts his life or something, that is this, and sanctification, think about it as a focus on the kingdom. Is bring your life more and more to the focus of Jesus Christ. So he'll sanctify us in all kinds of areas. You know, sometimes I'm watching something and say, eh, it is not bad, but it's just not best. So sanctification is just that bringing our focus on the Lordship of Jesus, what he's doing. So we, the Holy Spirit, can use us so that as he is in the world, so are we. The Holy Spirit's job is for us to be able to hear, see, and <coughs> do what Jesus did. So it's just, you know, he wants, he's in us. So that's, so sanctification from the beginning for true salvation. I said so, so salvation. Me growing up, I thought it was a ticket to heaven. So, so I read what Sozo was. The peace, the deep peace, the healing, the wholeness. I mean, God just pouring through us. Because our that salvation continues. Work out your salvation. It continues. And say it's faith in the truth. We 
know that. We are saw that today. We have faith in the truth of God. The word to live living share, and I live in God. The word of God goes forth and accomplishes what it was sent to be. We have faith and trust in his word. So we become more and more people of God's word. Deception and truth. And we know the truth, and we you know the truth comes through us. More and more and more, so people can receive it. It's not like dang man. It's giving them another option. Like I said, people are learning how to option for peace, for God, for his joy. So God wants to use us. Look, look at the next one. Because you're going to say, hey, Lord, again. It was for this he called you to our gospel that we may what? Gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. God says, all truth is good. You know, uh, uh, people take that one verse in the Old Testament, I will not give my glory to anyone. We're not anyone. Amen. Amen. I'm a son, a son and daughter. So, so he gives his glory to us. And we've seen it over and over and over in Scripture. You may gain the glory. So then, brethren, hold to the traditions which you were taught. Hold to the one. May the Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts. Amen. So that uh, God is just so to step in more to what He wants to do in and through us. And why? Because it's so unique. We are so gifted. Uniquely. That's why God does it in us. He does it so that we can we can be a people to have his light in us in such a unique way. You know, you're a piece of work. Turn to somebody and say, You're a piece of work. You're God's piece of work. Ephesians 2 10. You are God's workmanship made in Christ under good works. As God has prepared in advance for you to walk into them. God that is so powerful. So I'm going to finish up just a few minutes here on this whole theme of God coming to us. Remember I said three comings. The last one, he's coming with us. The second one, he's coming for us. <laughs> Amen. That's the rapture. But Acts 3 talks about him coming. And so let's look at it. Oh, good. I hope I have <laughs> Is it Acts? I'm going to go find it. I'm going to read it. Let's go to Acts 3. Because it's powerful. Your God was up, whether your phone or whatever. Verse 19, therefore repent, return to the Lord, so your sins may be wiped out, in order that the refreshing may come with the presence of the Lord. So that he may send Jesus, that's the coming right there, the Christ appointed for you, whom heaven must receive into the period of restoration of all things. About which the Father, the God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet from ancient time. So he is coming to us. Holy Spirit is here with us. And He is coming to prepare us for what we are going to see done in the last days. We are a chosen generation. We're a holy people, a nation of priests and kings. So He's coming to us. And to look all, all things being restored. We're in that area at time, God, of things being restored. It's just amazing that we're alive in this time. Amen. That's why as I, as I share this, I want your expectation to arise. Because God's going to do it. We give it permission, right? We say yes. Psalm 110 says that we volunteer for the 
the day of his hour. So that's how the rest of restoration is going on. Right now it's going on. The enemies of God are being put under the feet of Jesus. So Jesus is coming to his body to complete this. That's why I was doing you know, Because guys, we're going to another level with God. Because God wants it and needs it for us. You're going to see it. I'll tell you, like we were just sitting there yesterday with this guy, all of a sudden, we get inspired thoughts. Who knew that? They come to you. They open up to you. Guys, this is going to be amazing. But we've got to accomplish what God is doing in us first. Let me just, I'm trying to finish. I know we had a great time with the Holy Spirit. Remember what St. was? That focus of our life to Jesus and in his kingdom. Here we go. In 2 Corinthians 6. Turn with me there. We can look at it. This whole thing of him coming to us. It's just powerful. 2 Corinthians 6, and then verse 14. I'll start with verse 14. And think about this whole process of sanctification, of what he's doing in us. Amen? 14. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. What partnership has the enemy with us? What partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? What fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony is Christ with Baal, Satan? Does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And that's not mean we, we we don't be in the world. We are in the world, but not of it. Because we're given them to need. That's why we can't be entangled with the things of the world. That's that sanctification process. A relic women has the temple of God with idols. But we are the temple of the living God. Amen, Monet. And here's five ways he's coming to us. I'm going to find that in my screen here. It's right there. Number one, verse 16. I will dwell in them. God, he's coming in a greater way in these days. We've seen that scripture. We're going to experience it more and more. Amen. We're going to experience it. I will dwell with them. Number two, I will walk among them. And that word is just not taking a, a nice Sunday afternoon walk. He'll walk among us. And, and the word there is, I'm going to just spell P-E-R-I-P-A-T. Imperipato. It's a great word. It's a double intensive. Think about what he's doing, guys. He's coming to dwell in us. He's coming to walk among us, and that verse word means that he is going to trail and pulverize every enemy that rises against you. You can possess your heritage and Come on. Come on. Wow. And that's what he's doing, guys. Y'all ready for the next one? I'm still trying to find it. I know I have it in here, guys. We've got to just find it. Oh. Second one. Third one. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I shall be their God, they shall be my people. God is so close to us. Or I will welcome them. God is actively receiving each of us, personally and intimately. He is preparing us to represent Him. God, in any a lot of the enemy's got to come down. God is welcoming you. He's receiving you in every way. He wants you. The love of God has got to be soaked in us. And number five, I will be a father to them, and they shall be my sons and daughters. Listen to this. He said, I'm going to be their God. He takes us to a new level now. As God, he's going to protect us. 
He's going to provide for us. He's going to do amazing things for us. Because we're his people. Now he goes to a new level. We talked about knowing God at different levels of, of experience and then in food to them. That's all in scripture. This is what he's talking about. Now I'm going to be the father. They shall be my sons and daughters. Amen. So he is doing that, guys. He is he's laid out a path of sonship to us. And I'm telling you, listen to this. Sonship is not a title, it's a manifestation. It's him living through us. <clears throat> God is not about titles. When he says you're my son, he means you're my son. You're going to walk. If I say son, I mean son and daughter, right? God does it again. Again, get used to being the bride of Christ. <laughs> but we're his sons and daughters. And that's what God is doing. So guys, let's just yield to him. Right? Let's yield to him. I'm gonna, I want you to stand up. I want to share one, one more scripture as we pray. God has done amazing things today. He's going to keep working. I want us to take a hold of this. Write down Hebrews 8, verse 10 through 12. Five more ways God's coming to us. Five more ways God's coming to us. Maybe that's a more commit to it. Go back and listen to the scriptures and send them out of the list or so you want. Yeah. I'm away. I want to see this right here. What is it God wants to do with us right here? But this is part three of the Christ in us. It's just shaking stuff off of us so we can know who we are. Anto Crator. <laughs> you know that when I just shared about five, I will. Second Corinthians 6. Verse 18 says, Thus says the Lord Almighty. And that translation, <coughs> and told and told. it's the only place in New Testament, it's ten, ten places, not as in Revelation, it's the only place of other other is in that scripture. He said, and I am Andrew Christ Lord. I am your creator, and I will dispose of you. He started, he's all finished. He's the Alpha, and the he's the Omega. So God, I just want four comments in you. So that no Amen. matter what news you hear, you hear the news of God. And God's going to shine his light brighter and brighter and brighter to the noonday sun. You're going to see amazing things happen. Just, I tell you, believe it and just watch it happen step into it. For Hebrews 8 10. This is a covenant I will make with the house of Israel. Like it. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws, my word, into their mind. I will write them on their heart. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall not teach anyone. <coughs> Fellow citizens and everyone his brothers saying, Know the Lord, why? So they will all know me. I'll be here for that promise, God. Well, we will know you. We, we are knowing your ways and knowing how you're moving, God. God, we're knowing how to sense your presence. God, we know your word. We know your love for us. Father, we know joy instead of happiness. We know our deep joy that comes in whatever circumstance. And we know your grace and we know your faithfulness, God. We will know you, God. And I will be merciful to their iniquities. I will remember their sins no more. This is the new God. So, Father, I thank you for that, God. What I just impart right now in Jesus' name, God, the power of your transformation in us. God, we declare we are Christ. In us is the hope of glory. Mary, the hope of glory. Because you are in us. And Lord, you be before us, nothing is against us. So let's see this happen.
happen more and more and more. Oh, we will volunteer for the day of your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Okay, God love you. You need prayer?